Hello, Timber Antlers fans, and welcome to another edition of Arizona Check-In with manager Matt Erickson. Matt has a special guest again this week. He's brought in Thomas Dillard. Thomas has been in Matt's work group now that the team is playing games down in Arizona. We'll check in with Thomas and Matt right now. Hello, Timber Rattlers fans, and welcome to the Timber Rattlers YouTube channel for another edition of the Arizona Check-In with Timber Rattlers manager, Matt Erickson. This is episode six, and Matt brings in a former Timber Rattler in Thomas Dillard. Gentlemen, welcome to the show today from Arizona. Thanks. Good to be here. Thank you for having us. Thomas, let's uh, let's get start with you. Uh, you got to experience uh, Appleton during the summer again last year as part of the alternate training squad. Uh, what did you learn, and and what did uh, how was that whole experience for you last year? Yeah, that experience was awesome for me. Um, just getting to learn from a lot of a lot of guys with big league time um, and being more hands on with the coaches. You know, there was uh, a little bit more time for development and. and uh, you know, just getting out there every day with guys like Jace Peterson or David Freitas, guys that have, have been there and just great guys who can give you some tips on how to play the game. Uh, so it was just an awesome experience. And, you know, I, I love the city of Appleton, so it's good to be back there with uh, all the coaches and players. Now, how was the whole catching experience? You brought up David Freitas, but Mario Feliciano, Jason Nottingham, uh, a bunch of other guys were here, and, and you're still trying to get back into the swing of things and the catching side of things, aren't you? Yes, sir. It's uh, it's definitely fun for me. I like being uh, really involved in the game and uh, being in a leadership role. So being back there behind the plate and, you know, just making a relationship with the pitchers. Uh, it's it's fun to be able to call a game and to be able to be back there competing with them. Uh, so it's been challenging, but, you know, I'm enjoying it and all the coaches are helping me out a lot. So it's been a, it's been a fun time. So was the uh, highlight of the alternate training site last year, Bobby Wall on the PA? I think I, I think I have to go with that. I've, I've told a lot of people about that. Um, and he obviously played at Ole Miss a little bit before me, and I've told all the coaches about that. Uh, and they just they can't stop talking about how good of a guy Bobby is. And, you know, I think he might have a future in that after he gets done throwing 100, you know. <laughs> Matty, let's uh, check in with you here. Uh, you know, Thomas being at the alternate training site last year got to work out. Uh, there are several other guys that are down at the spring training complex who were in Appleton last season. Have you seen their development kind of grow a little bit from that experience last year to this year? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the big worry from a developmental standpoint last year was losing a whole year of competitive baseball. Um, and and we were able to to get to Appleton, bring not only have the alternate site there, but bring some of our uh, core young players, um, and and it was I thought it went extremely well. You know, we we kind of thrown up there, not really knowing what to do and and what the expectations were going to be. But we had outstanding weather. We adjusted on the fly. We made things a little bit more efficient. We had to. What I liked about it is the the coaches and the players really communicated together what was working, what was not wasn't working, um, and we we got in some really good work. So. Uh, it was awesome to be able to have that experience uh, and have some of our young players uh, able to be ready to go this year. You've uh, already got a few games under your belt. We'll talk a little bit about the lineups here in a little bit, but just how good was it to, to get on the field and play some other team other than an intra-squad game, Matt? Yeah, and uh, and that other team was the, was the Dodgers, so that's always a, a good color to go over. We were over in Glendale the first day, um, played the Dodgers, uh, and uh, and had a had a nice first day, uh, you know. One of the one of the main points uh, on the hitting side of things this year, all through A ball, through uh, our lower level rookie leagues, through high A, is zone management, um, and that's going to be a main focus and priority. And from day one, the first three days, we've uh, we've done a nice job with that. Um, after seeing low A ball for the last ten years. Uh, and the inconsistency of the ability of our hitters to to control the zone and control the strike zone, um, putting a, a heavy priority on that, uh, I think is a great foundation for any young hitter. A uh, lot of familiar names. Like I said, you guys have had three games. Uh, I see Reese Olson, Nick Bennett, and uh, Victor Castaneda have been the starting pitchers for the first couple of games. Uh, how did they look, and, and what did you think? It's a small sample size for sure. It was just uh, a couple innings from each of those guys. Uh, uh, Victor Castaneda, uh, for, for those for those of you that saw him a couple years ago, uh, he's come into camp in incredible shape. 
like his body is transformed uh, and he's fully prepared to to get a workload out of the starting role and get more innings. Uh, a couple of years ago, he was used out of our bullpen uh, and through just probably one inning every couple of days. Uh, but now he'll be asked to, to have a little bit more workload and, and he's fully ready for it. Reese Olsen's another guy that we've seen, um, uh, the baby face assassin. He <laughs> He uh, still has a nice arm, uh, and the other day he was uh, commanding his off-speed pitches a little bit better. He had one pretty good inning where he dominated and one inning where it got away from him a little bit uh, as far as controlling the zone. But, again, that's the first day, the first start. I fully expect him to uh, to get better each time he goes out there. Uh, another name that you didn't mention is uh, Scotty Sunich. He's in our work group at the moment. Uh, he's another guy that I've seen uh, pitch a, a couple times. He had some time yesterday. Again, uh, in the double a game um, and pitch pretty well so it's good to see some familiar faces uh, and to get them back out on the field uh, and watch a little baseball thomas i saw you caught uh, you were in the starting lineup as a catcher on the game back on april 16th the game that uh, nick bennett threw and bennett was a, a draft pick in, in 2019 uh, and just kind of came up to the team late didn't get a lot of time with appleton but what did you see in his uh, performance and, and how are you judging guys uh, behind the plate right now uh, yeah, I thought Nick threw really well. He's one of those guys that's going to throw the kitchen sink at you. Uh, he has four pitches that he can control in the zone uh, at any count. So Nick's going to be a guy that's going to go out there and give you a, a competitive start every time. Uh, worked on his changeup a lot the other day. He was having trouble getting it down. And then, uh, you know, second inning, he came back out and just looked looked dominant out there. So good to get to work with him. He's a good guy. You know, we go, we go golfing a lot. So we have a good relationship. Um, but just him being a good competitor is uh, really the biggest thing. Uh, you know, it is fun to get back there and catch and just see the development of the pitchers and how they're trying to work in game and stuff like that. So it's it's good getting back there working with them. I guess, Tom, what did you do for your uh, off season between the end of uh, the training camp last year and, and the start of uh, spring training this year? Uh, went back to Oxford for about two months and got some good family time. And then actually went down to West Palm Beach, Florida and trained down at Cressy Sports Performance. Um, so I got to got to train with some big names down there, a lot of minor league guys. Um, some familiar T-Rats were down there too. Peter Strezlecki was down there and uh, Jesus Lohano. Um, so just getting down there and, you know, I think this is really one of the, the first off seasons that I've had to, you know, get live at bats and just coming into a spring training kind of knowing what to expect. Uh, so being down there, it uh, really helped me get prepared for this year. For those yeah. of you that don't know, Thomas Dillard is—he's he was drafted just a couple of years ago, but he's he's quickly made an impact within our organization. He's the social coordinator of the <laughs> uh, <laughs> of player development. Um, I don't know how what the running total is now, but uh, there's a few of our players dating uh, Mr. Dillard's friends. He's got a wide network, wide circle. Well, I've, I've, I've heard Oxford is kind of a big party school down there. I mean, it, it doesn't necessarily rival Madison, but uh, it, that doesn't surprise me. Not to mention, he, you know, he went to Ole Miss, and my, my nephews, my sister and her family, lived down there in Mississippi. And so they gave me the full scouting report of Thomas Dillard <laughs> before he came to the Timber Rallers. I don't know who was more excited, that we were getting a, a, a high draft pick coming to the T-Rats two years ago, or if it was my – my nephews uh, excited that a rebel was coming to play with the T-Rats. I don't know how to follow that up, Matty, but uh, I was going to just ask uh, Thomas how good it felt to be back on the field uh, just playing games, but uh, it, let's just roll, roll with that. So what, b getting back in, in, in actual competition has to feel really good, Thomas. Oh, it's great. You know, the fact that you get to go play somebody with a different jersey on is, is big, you know, because – um, it's, a, it's a challenge to go out there every day and uh, have live at bats and inner squads. You know, you have to constantly remind yourself that you're, you're fighting to, you know, for a job and, you know, just developing yourself. So to be able to go out there and face other teams and get the competitive juices flowing is great. And even just being with, you know, some familiar names like we've talked about, just going out there and playing with guys that you haven't seen since the end of the 2019 season, um, just starting up those relationships again has been really fun. Matty, I usually ask this when I'm down in Arizona, um, when I look at the lineups and have a chance to ask, how close are you to an open eight day roster for the Timber Rattlers based on those lineups? And there's still a lot that can obviously happen between now and 
the trip north, but how close are you guys to, to what we see on the lineup card on that Brewers PD Twitter site uh, to, to an opening day roster? Yeah, it's a fair question. You know, we are 10, 11 days away from breaking camp and, and getting up there. Um, we have a core working group. There's names that change uh, every single day, but this is a sheet that we get, and it's got all of our teams on there. Uh, but our core working group has remained the same for the first eight, nine days of camp. Um, there's a reason Tom Stillard is here with me today. You know, he's got a pretty strong chance of making this roster. Uh, but we've had uh, guys like Garrett Mitchell have, have been in our working group the entire time. Um, LG Castillo is another familiar uh, name that we've had a couple years. Corey Howell has had a great first three games. He's really swinging the bat well um, and, and also playing center field. And we had him at shortstop uh, for a couple innings the other day. Uh, he looks really good. Um, Gabby Garcia, uh, yeah, Jason Coca, and and now uh, Con Contrell uh, or Hayden Contrell is a new guy to our group, um, a guy that was drafted last year. Uh, he got to work out with our group yesterday, uh, and will uh, will be in the lineup today at second base. So we'll get a, a look at that. Other catchers, Nick Kale is another guy that uh, has been consistently in our group, and expect him to to be in Appleton uh, if we can all stay healthy. All right. Well, we hope you guys all stay healthy and have a great camp. And we're looking forward to seeing both you, Thomas, and, and you, Matt, in a couple of weeks when uh, when the ball drops for real here and, and you get to play uh, some games that count in the standings. Sounds great. Appreciate it, Chris. Looking forward to it, Chris. Thank you. Uh, all right. Thank you. And uh, that will do it for this Arizona check-in with Tim Rattler's manager, Matt Erickson. We want to thank Matt and Thomas Dillard for joining us on this week's check-in. Hard to believe, folks, but we are just two weeks away from opening day. We'll have one more check-in with Matt next week. And don't forget, if you have liked these videos, like the video and subscribe to the Timber Rattlers YouTube channel. Until next time, Timber Rattlers fans, we'll see you at the ballpark.